The former Nazi Day Fiancé cast member Jeffrey Paschal was sentenced to 18 years in prison with no chance of parole. Today we will talk about the sentencing and the testimonies, why Mary was removed from the courtroom and provide an update on Varya. Jeffrey was found guilty on three counts following a DV episode against his former girlfriend Kristen that took place on June 9, 2019. Shortly after the incident, Jeffrey traveled to Russia to be filmed on Before the Night Day Season 4 with his girlfriend Varya. The Night Day fiancé cast member spilled on YouTube that he was offered a guilty plea with no jail time whatsoever and only a criminal record. Jeffrey said he absolutely refused to take the plea and maintained his innocence. It was speculated that having the charges on his criminal record would affect his battle to gain full custody of his son who lives in Canada. Jeffrey also claimed that in retaliation for not taking the plea, the prosecution threw in a couple of more charges, including aggravated kidnapping. I got, I, when I first got arrested in June, it was for domestic assault, which is bad in itself, but it's a misdemeanor. They offered for me to plead guilty. They tried to drop the charges, but the, um, the victim didn't want to drop it. And uh, they offered me no punishment whatsoever just to have it on my record. I said, no, absolutely not. And they said, if you don't take it, we're going to take it to the grand jury. We'll try to uh, uh, trump up the charges. We'll try to get you kidnapped and we'll try to get you. I was like, you do whatever the hell you want to do. I am not accepting anything other than a full exoneration. Jeffrey's lawyer could not ethically provide any comment on the plea deal. But uh, Jeffrey, uh, being Jeffrey, uh, I think kind of delineated those um, in a number of YouTube broadcasts, uh, which are a public record, worked its way into the public domain. But, you know, Jeffrey felt very strongly about uh, his innocence and wanting uh, to have his day in court. And, um, and he is very uh, committed to uh, moving forward as the appellate process uh, is starting to unfold. Jeffrey's trial took place on October 8, 2021. Previously, we posted a recap of the trial on this channel, which you can watch following the link in the description. During the trial, Jeffrey testified and claimed his innocence, but the jury found Kristen's statement and prosecution's case to be more credible, hence finding him guilty on all counts. The jury took less than two hours to deliberate and found him guilty as charged. Jeffrey was escorted out of the courtroom and booked into a prison the same day. The minimum sentence for his convictions was set to be eight years. However, considering his previous criminal record, the prosecution said that they are aiming for 12 to 20 years. During the trial, there were two instances where the judge could have ruled a mistrial. The first instance was when Kristen referred to her past DV experience with Jeffrey and the second instance was when the police officer on scene testified that he thinks that Jeffrey's wounds were self-inflicted. People who are well-versed in the justice system stated it was warranted to rule a mistrial, though the judge ultimately decided to proceed with the trial after some deliberation. Jeffrey's lawyer told Court TV that after the sentencing he is looking forward to appealing the verdict, implying errors during the trial. Um, on Jeffrey's behalf, we're looking forward to getting to the Court of Appeals uh, and addressing some of the uh, issues uh, that we perceive to be um, potential errors uh, during the course of the trial. Uh, obviously, we can't comment on those until they're a public record, um, but uh, we're looking forward to uh, Thursday because that's the uh, next step uh, that allows us uh, to move uh, forward on Jeffrey's behalf. Jeffrey and Varia had kept their relationship status a secret from Natty Day Fiancé fans since their season premiered. It was only after the trial that Varya opened up on social media that she is still in a relationship with Jeffrey. Although she wasn't present during the trial, fans noticed Jeffrey taking off a ring from his finger when he was being taken into custody. The United Day Fiancé fans suspected that Jeffrey and Varya might have gotten married. Those sources close to Jeffrey said the ring was his good luck charm. With regards to Varya's legal status in the United States, she refused to provide any comment. She has been living in the States for over a year now, and many people presumed she won a green card in a federal lottery. However, Varya did mention on her social media that she couldn't leave the country to see her mom, 
implying that her legal status is unresolved for now. As Jeffrey's sentencing initially was set to December 3rd and was delayed for two months, Varia went live and said she wasn't happy with the American legal system due to this delay. But she later added that when Jeffrey found out that the new sentencing date is his late son's birthday, he saw it as a sign. After the trial, Varia had moved out from the house in Pensacola, Florida that belongs to Jeffrey and his mother. The house was listed for sale by Varia shortly after his trial and is still up for sale. Currently, Varia resides in Jeffrey's house in Knoxville, Tennessee, and she is taking care of his dogs and rental properties. Varia mentioned some of Jeffrey's tenants stopped paying rent after he was arrested, and she had to initiate an eviction process. The night before the sentencing on February 3rd, Varia posted to her Instagram, selecting the most appropriate attire for Jeffrey's court appearance. However, he still appeared in court in his prison striped uniform. At the sentencing, the judge was to establish any aggravated factors to determine the length of the sentence. Jeffrey's friends, including Mary and Varia, were present in court. The first witness called to the stand was Kristen, Jeffrey's ex-girlfriend who suffered during the June 9, 2019 incident. She testified regarding the prior instances of DV by Jeffrey. The second witness was Allison, Jeffrey's ex-wife and the mother of his son, Crusoe. On his time on 90 Day Fiancé before the 90 Day Season 4, Jeffrey claimed to only have four sons, Paxton, Dakota, Kayvon, and late cousin. So it's unclear why Jeffrey never mentioned his son with Allison until his trial. Allison testified that Jeffrey was abusive to her as well. She specified that she was attacked and strangled by him and coerced into being intimate with him right after this incident. Following the incident, she took their son and moved to Florida. During their six years of marriage, she said that Jeffrey isolated her and she was financially dependent on him. She said that she only called the police once during another instance of Jeffrey trying to be intimate with her against her will. During the cross-examination, Jeffrey's lawyer tried to point out that Ellison never took pictures of her wounds and that if she was willing to split custody with Jeffrey, she was not frightened by him. The judge mentioned after the recess that there was some verbal and non-verbal communication heard during the testimony from the people present in court. According to Court TV Insider, Mary Wallace was the person the judge referred to. Quote from Court TV Mary Wallace, the defendant's ex-girlfriend, is being reprimanded by one of the courtroom deputies for talking to Peschel during testimony. She has been removed. Mary went live on Instagram to say she was only blowing Jeffrey a kiss and that her communication had nothing to do with her relationship with Varia. Uh, yes, I did get, I, I got kicked out of the courtroom because I blew Jeffrey a kiss and that's, that's what happened. Um, then the bailiff came over and said that he didn't want anyone speaking to Jeffrey or any of that. Um, so uh, no one was to speak to him or they kept making him turn around. He wasn't even allowed to look at us. Uh, so that's, that's pretty much what happened. I didn't want anyone saying that. It was because I just like Varia or Varia and I are not on good terms. It, it had nothing to do with Varia. It had everything to do with me not or me trying to talk to Jeffrey. So um, uh, just they're not playing. So that's, that's all that happened. The defense then submitted Jeffrey's previous drug-related convictions for the court to establish that he is a repeated offender. The defense was asking for a sentence of 12 years, while the prosecution asked for a minimum sentence of 16 years. Jeffrey had a chance to address the court. Jeffrey stated that he has a family and children, and that he respects both Kristen and Ellison, and he wishes them all the best. During his statement, he was crying and asking for mercy. So I ask that you, uh, you have mercy on me, you have mercy on my family, my kids, and show me leniency in the sentencing so I can be a productive member of society and be back in their lives. When the judge delivered the sentence, he said that Jeffrey has a dark and evil side to him, as seen in court on that day. He said that he thinks that Jeffrey has a desire to inflict emotional and physical pain on women. 
Jeffrey Ian Paschal in docket 116806. The jury having found you guilty in count one of aggravated kidnapping, a class B felony. For the reasons stated, the court finds that the appropriate sentence in this case is 18 years to serve. You're a range two offender. This, of course, will be a 100% service rate. When Jeffrey will be released, he will be 62 years old. However, the defense have plans to appeal this verdict. Do you think the 18 year sentence is appropriate? Please share your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching.